a bustling dwarf city underneath Mount Aron. You learned quickly that some, like Captain Flaudvier, definitely still remembered Vidar and the deal that had apparently been struck before. As the initial hostilities, especially regarding your necrotech ebbed, you were welcomed to the city's upper district as guests, and you were given room and board. You were instructed rather rudely by the king's advisor to retire for the evening and to get dressed in finer attire for your audience with the king the following day. And we begin today's session as you awaken in the comfortable chambers of the guest house. Although the walls of your rooms are carved into the stone, it feels curiously warm to the touch, even without the large rug that lays played across the room. I don't seem to have it written down. Do we have a specific time for our meeting? You weren't told. Okay. Um, did our lower district friend Veskir eventually return to his home after our shopping? He would have, yes. I shall get up and roll around the uh, hotel. If I should call it a hotel, guest house, whatever. Okay. You step outside into the corridor. Is there anything else you do? Anywhere you go, specifically? Is there a breakfast to smell anywhere? If I, like, walk down to the lobby or, I don't know, something like that. You... give me a perception roll. I think that's a 17? You don't smell anything that would imply cooked food at the moment. I will go to the desk then, if uh, the gentleman is still there. Ring the bell. You enter the entrance hall to the guest house, and as soon as you do, you do see the dwarf behind the counter sort of perk up and lean over a little bit to look in your direction. Good morning. Good, uh, morrow. Any, uh, messages? Nothing was left for me. Alright. Uh, where might one find breakfast around here? Ah, well, if you or your compatriots are hungry, I can send something to your room. Oh, that sounds a nice way to wake up the rest of what? Why don't you go and do that? Um, would you like meat or some fruit? Oh, meat's Perhaps fine. Perhaps a mix of both? We, we, we don't need to impose upon your generosity for fruit today. Meat's Very just well. fine. I'll have it sent to your room. Yes, so I'll head back to my room until mm -hmm. Is there anything oh. you do while you wait? I uh, get clothes ready, you know. Powder my nose. <laughs> Is there anything anyone else does? 
Evelyn will probably start, have woken up and started moving about to get herself ready for the day as well. Soleil would uh, finally, after a whole year of traveling, <coughs> even though it was not in world maybe a year, um, yeah, we would just like sleep in for once. Until someone wakes him, probably. Your current section of the guest panel. These, these rooms along a train corridor with the entrance hall being here. Which one of you would have taken the first two? Are they all presumably ad identical? Yes. It's a weird yeah, color you've chosen. The modestly furnished. There's, you know, a comfortable bed, some amenities like water, a basin, a toilet. But nothing out of the ordinary. One probably would have been like in the second room. Then red. After a couple of minutes, you hear a knock in your door. As you open the door, you're almost slightly disappointed as you do not see any food. Instead, in front of you, you see a dwarf in gold plate armor. Ah, in Oscar. Fortunate timing. I was looking for all of you. Seems you are already awake. Uh, I am. I don't know about the rest, though. The voice of Captain Vlodvia echoes from underneath the helmet. For a moment he pauses and musters your clothing. That will probably lighten Gisarsson's mood. But I that was... is also the least of your problems in this audience. Oh. Ah, oh, the rest of you. Oh. I was about the to door get... <laughs> through the entrance hall swings open. And the dwarf from behind the desk comes with a large platter in his hand. Four separate plates, all stocked with several meats and some bread. Ah, perhaps timing was less fortunate. I will wait over in the entrance, but do not tarry. The rock stone roll for leisure. Right. I don't really know what that means. <laughs> I'll tap on Evelyn's sword. The dwarf with the big tablet offers you one of the plates. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that and eat as and I go then. As you take it, he sort of walks along with you, as presumably to knock on the other doors and hand out the plates. But as you walk with him, he almost waits for you to. Then Evelyn would respond, opening the door. Um, yes. Ah, oh, right. Wonderful. Bre breakfast and load beer is already waiting in the entrance hall for us. Perfectly fine. I'm just about ready, so I'll eat this and reach out there in a moment. Great. I'm gonna get the others into their uh, uniforms for the day. Uh, and Evelyn is has dressed herself mm -hmm. in like one of her nicer outfits that she would wear to court. Uh. As you follow, knocking on every door, the dwarf is right behind you. Just following along <laughs> as you are sort of doing the work of knocking for him. Mm -hmm. Well, he's got his hands full. I don't know. 
I was so saying just Soleil, who might need to be woken up. Yeah, yeah. Can hear him from inside. Yeah? Rise and shine. Duty calls already. Alrighty. We're we'll right there. I have breakfast and your clothes are ready and pressed here. The dwarf, as you open the door and, you know, somewhat step inside, just kind of walks past you to a small table near the entrance and puts down a plate before exiting back out. Um, I'm gonna get to... Huxley's door and ask the dwarf, do you mind waiting out here a moment? And I'm gonna go uh, inside and of sh course. shut the yeah. door. If you'd like, you could also take one. <laughs> yep, I'll, I'll, yeah, no, that's fine. I'll, I'll... Thank you very much, <laughs> sir. Thank you. <laughs> Just with this tablet now empty, heads back towards the entrance hall. Hey, are, are you are you awake? Are you not the black thing yet? Loud snoring. It, so, do you look like Mar right now, then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, I figured. I figured. <laughs> Probably like, hey. fell off the bed. Uh, uh huh. Snoring. Just... Hey, hey. Yeah. Oh. I'm awake, I'm awake. Yeah, you need to look like a dwarf, and here's your breakfast. Oh yeah. It yeah. just morphs into a dwarf. <laughs> That's never gonna be not creepy. <laughs> uh we need to meet out and then it's just all as soon as you feel ready. Okay. You should stay under the covers next time in case that guy wants it or something. Or lock <laughs> your door. I don't know. How? I just <laughs> said I don't know. <laughs> These pets are really slippery. Are they? I didn't yeah. have a problem. Well, the, the captain did say something about rocks rolling. Maybe that's what he meant rolling off the bed. I don't know. I'm going to finish up relatively quickly and head out. Probably having not even really finished the full meal and more of an attempt to be timely. Yeah. Probably a piece of relatively you know, fresh meat on that plate. Cooked. A couple of nuts and some bread. So it's probably a quick bite here, there, and you're already out the door. Mm -hmm. Good morning, eat Captain. Very quickly, but definitely eats everything. <laughs> <laughs> As you step into the entrance hall, you see Lord Vir sort of sitting on a bench near the side of the door. His foot tapping almost in a maybe impatient, nervous manner. And as soon as the door swings open, he turns towards you. Right. You are ready to leave? Partially, you're right. Um, how much longer do you think on our companions? It shouldn't be. I, I thought it would be quick. Hux will appear in his normal clothing. <laughs> and Evelyn will just like stare at Red. Oh, uh, st step into my room real quick. What? Why? <laughs> I like pull you around the corner. You need to change into the like fancy clothes that we looked at. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, looks good. Fancy blue tiger appears, but you can see that he's awkwardly trying to eat a piece of meat still behind his mask. Like <laughs> he's like trying to look menacing and cool, but like while eating, it definitely falls apart. 
simply didn't want to waste right. the food that was just brought there. Uh, what what the, uh, the dwarf and the tiefling do? Right, right, right. right. Yep. Yeah, like surprisingly quickly. <laughs> right, right then. Let's uh, head for the palace. Is there anything you need to get before we? No, we should. We should go. I believe we have everything. Well, he stands up and begins heading out the door. In a somewhat hurried march. Blynn will do her best. Like, I don't look like I'm walking fast, but trying to keep up a pace. But trying to keep her the proper decorum of. Mm -hmm. I am a noble, and I will be treated as such. <laughs> In this situation. Yeah, I don't remember if we said this, but you definitely got briefed on everything we learned about the yeah. guns on the yeah. city. It's a short but brisk walk from the guest house to the palace. This time, as you approach the gated wall of the palace, it opens in anticipation of your approach. And as soon as you've passed them along the marble stairs, you can already see the king's advisor waiting. His face is perpetually one of slight displeasure. But as his gaze wanders between each of you, a slight smirk forms just at the corner of his mouth. Thank you, Lord Vir, as always. I see you've taken my advice, even if you were only mostly partially successful. I am sure the gesture is appreciated. Lodvir, you two were asked for your accompany your charges to the audience. The king is currently receiving reports, so you may have to wait a moment. However, I was told to fetch you immediately regardless. On the spot, with a slight flourish, the dwarf swivels, turning towards the palace. With me, please try to walk in an even pace, chest out, chin up. Always the advisor do. begins walking towards the marble palace doors. Ah. In an almost half parade march. As Captain Flotvier follows, he disregards all of the instruction he was given. <laughs> Evelyn will walk as she has been taught to walk in this situation, not taking any of his advice into consideration, continuing her own. You keep pace behind Lodvir through the sparsely lit gardens. In the dark, some of the flowers seem slightly fluorescent, casting a dim, colorful light onto the path between them. As you reach the gate, you realize that what you had thought were unmoving statues next to the gate doors weren't that at all, but dwarves armored in heavy silvery plate armor. As they move to open the gated doors for you, the dwarves move surprisingly light-footed. The heavy clattering of plate you would have expected is entirely absent. And as the gates stand fully open, the mithra clad guard moves back to their original position and posture, and your retinue heads inside. The first hall, a section of the palace easily 200 feet long, is an assault on your senses. You had seen light from the windows outside, but nothing could have prepared you for this, not with your eyes having grown so accustomed to the slight dark. The floor is a polished mirror of mithril, 
reflecting the garish light from the vaulted ceiling, which is even worse. Silver mirrored chandeliers throw light against every mirror surface of the ceiling, which in turn reflect more light along walls adorned with lines and streaks of more mirror surfaces. No matter how hard you try to avert your eyes, everywhere you look, you are looking near another surface reflecting this infinite cascade of light. You're fairly certain there are guards there too, wearing matching armor, but you don't particularly look for them. You keep pace with the group mainly by the sound of their footsteps in front of you, and soon pass by another set of doors. Immediately as you pass them, a welcome dimness envelops you once again. The, hell, the hall you stand in now is a marvel of an entirely different kind. In stark contrast, the room is fashioned entirely from a dark black stone. To either side, the pillars of the wall rise from a pit far below the bridge extending in front of you. A pool of glowing liquid fed by a waterfall along the end of the bridge throws a moving display of light along these dark walls. Where the bridge ends and a long staircase begins, the room is dominated by two massive statues of horned rams, beyond which, above the highest dais at the end of the staircase, more horn-like carvings adorn the throne room. At the very end of this gauntlet of mithril-clad guards stand not only a single throne, but multiple to either side of the clear centerpiece. The king is easy to make out, by contrast. Clad in the same shining mithril as the guards, save for the golden crown, he sits solemnly at the center. As you first enter the room, a heated conversation seems to be just beginning. Can you guys roll me a perception roll? Sure can. Natural one. Good start. Good start. Good start. Dirty twenty. Six. Evelyn, for clarification, do you have comprehend languages? I do, and I probably would have cast it going into the situation based on the fact that I don't like not being able to speak Dwarvish and not knowing what conversations are on. So then both you and Huxley would clearly understand. I got a Do you ten. relay to the others? Um remember Freya, I think you have advantage on perception because you took the sentinel shield. True. Um probably as quietly as possible, like if Weren't if there are no current dwarves directly walking side by side us, then probably very under her breath, murmuring what the conversation is without making it looking like she's trying to talk as much as possible. Arrange you how you will be. 
There are always guards sort of within earshot, but they seem very detached, very stoic and uninterested in your movement. At what least is... at the moment. Who is this guy? Someone. That's been walking with us. Oh. Wasn't he the guy we met yesterday? Like the yeah, day no, before? He's not walking with you. I don't know okay. why he's there. <laughs> I, I'm gonna walk Abelin. and try and be like the shadow of Ablen and be like ah. the bo best bodyguard. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I always back to the old job, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's so something he, he's good to play. He's good playing that because he knows how a bodyguard would move. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just. Like Evelyn as like a noble, uh, as her like servant, uh, Shalei as her assassin. Uh, no assassin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> her assassin. <laughs> yeah, this is my assassin. I brought him with me. Mm -hmm. And Huxley's just like da -da 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 -da. <laughs> <laughs> trying to like follow the instructions of the guy, like walking in a rhythm with his chest puffed. <laughs> As long as what's being said was relevant, Beggar, Ablin yes. would be quietly and as discreetly as possible, like as far as any lip movement, being relaying that under her breath to Soleil and Rhett. Probably not trying to speak up loud enough that um, Hux would hear, but also being aware that Hux would understand the language mm -hmm. if she can hear. You would he can. understand this conversation relatively loudly. They're not really trying to whisper or speak in low tones. The scouts then also saw very large bear, which they confirmed my lord Bauxen to be. Well, out with it. Uh, Bjorn, Lord Box. Bjorn, that rook's head adorns my family's fucking fireplace for the pain inflicted upon our heritage. Is he up there, running around without his head? I believe, sir, the firebird may not require a creature's full body to be present. At least that was the conclusion of Engineer Ingvar. Christ, damned rotten vermin! I'll mount a hundred of those skulls. If I, if I need to. Just as the dwarf lord is taking a long breath, likely to continue his rant, the king holds up his hand, silencing the room. His eyes, however, seem to be set on you. You, Indwar Oscar, approach. Almost startled by the suddenness, the small advisor <laughs> breaks into a jog across the bridge and up the stairs, positioning himself halfway up. Now, heavily out of breath and panting, his voice is a little squeakier than usual. <sighs> I introduce his... Majesty King Thorleg, King Anta Haikar, ruler of Haithir, his eminence in Mithril, brother to Gisinthir, hero of the Great War, conqueror of the peak, and he who sits the throne of stone, my king, if I may introduce. That's enough, Björgolf. I know who they are. And where's the bloodsucker? Where'd you hide him? Somewhere in your bags, perhaps? Or is he himself too good to honor his deals in person? Have we approached it enough that I don't have to yell at the king? <laughs> you see Flodvir, as the king speaks, sort of slowly approach the stairs. It's up to you whether or not I you I probably follow. would have followed in pace as he walked forward. Um, not necessarily trying to move beyond him at any point. Mm. 
Is there any point where he stops and looks back at us, or did, was he it sort of following us him? Halfway across the flight of stairs. So probably to the top of the stairs here. Oh. Vidar would, of course, prefer to come himself. The city is, however, in need of his services, and he was unable to present himself to you, your majesty. You, you give me an insight check. <laughs> sure. Everyone, or? Uh, everyone can. If you are directly Find looking the for the king's fate. 30, 20. 18. The king's I can, mouth. I can is also roll deception if you want me to, because I don't think that's exactly. Yeah. No, that's fine. The king's mouth is largely covered with a very large beard. But you sort of when you mention Vidar and the city, see a little twitch in his eye. There's almost this short rise of anger before it almost gets pushed back down. Ugh. You're just his workers. So, if he's desperate enough to send you rag tank through the underground empire, he is desperate enough to pay my price. What'd he tell you? Access to his vault of rare magical weapons, mountains of gold, seat on the council polythreme? Polythreme. <laughs> All we are looking for from him is safety for our families. Which you can imagine having to turn to him for such a thing. It is truly a desperate time. For many places, not just Polythrene. Never in a thousand centuries would I order Exodus to that dreadful heap of iron. I'm here to strengthen my border take care of my people. No, it is curious. For years, visitors from outside have been rare, and now within weeks, there was a traveler before you, spouting words of Polythrene. Do you know what he wanted? I can guess, but I would prefer to hear from you. War on Polythrene. Egregious. Promised power, more wealth than the world, and all we had to do was open your bloodsucker's portal and march right on to war. Told that Rusker to find his ass and screw it back on his head like the jester is. I care not for Polythrene. The price has changed, and you're going to agree to it if you're walking away with our treasure. First things simple. We're sitting fats on several mountains of Mithril. It's no problem, but Mithra is only part Mithril. We're running low on the other part, Stranum Ore. You'll find it up on top of the peak. Problem is that other traveler's been causing havoc. Forced his way out there and never returned left us with a pretty pissy mess to clean. You made it through the underground. Congratulations. That means you're worth something down here. You'll work with my general to resolve that mountain situation. Number two, and this is the real price. Decades before, we almost did have a war with Polythrene. The hero of our people, my brother, Kisinthir, was laid in chains by the wizard cowards of your academy. The only reason why there was no war was because Kisinthir went willingly. A penance for past transgressions. Hogwash. Years have passed, the world has changed. You, you'll ensure he's freed, that he's free 
to return to his people who need him most, not rotting in some godforsaken hole. That is my price. My Beggar. brother Gisintir, for your Mithra. Beggar, do we, or do I recognize anything about this mention of Gisintir? Um, give me a history check. Yeah, seems like With some big historic, big historic thing. Red, you may also give me that. <laughs> Poor Red. Poor. Only uh, 15 for me. You have never heard the word Gesinthia, nor are you familiar with anything relating to imprisonment of a dwarf of a particular name or stature. There was several times in the past, before the blight, when Polythreme was attacked, whether it was a warband or creatures. But you don't recall anything about a dwarf of such stature. Well, if we have to agree, we have to agree. I personally don't know anything about that. It sounds before my time. And you said wizards? The wizards of Polythreme have abandoned us. So I would not lump I'm us in with them. I'm fairly certain they did not take him with them. They but had no love for him. That's good news then. They hold much less sway being gone and abandoned us in the city at this point. If you swear to it, you have your deal. We would need some time to consider it seeing it's it's beyond the terms of our the original agreement and some of those uh, while we could easily deal with the aspect on the peak and getting your stranum for you and um, as far as the terms of Githensier without knowing more about his permanent or current can situation or location it would be Folly of us who would agree to that in advance. As a, Folly sure. it may be, but it appears to me if you want to walk with that Mithra, you'll have little of a choice. And not saying that he is by any means, but considering the possibility that your brother could have died or something along those lines, <laughs> for us to agree. Not or been taken by the wizards. Years. Or been taken by the wizards. We don't know where he is. I'm Look. not asking for you to deliver him here. I'm asking for you to swear you'll do anything in your power to set him free. You and that blasted bloodsucker. Yes. Why don't we start with the peak and we will talk to that blasted bloodsucker. And then we'll, we'll likely then. have a deal. How about, does that sound reasonable? Gesture you have at least. some time to decide. But let me make it clear. There is no negotiation in this. On to more pleasant things. War, specifically on a fucking bird. Sigmire, I leave this part in your hands. I agree with you on Plodvir. Do as you please. You see an armored dwarf that had been standing off to the side of the thrones and lords now step forward. He gives a curt bow to the king and descends the stairs towards you. Excuse me, is that Sigmar in the Warhammer? 
It's Sigmeyer, okay? Oh, okay. Okay? He halts for a moment and looks you up and down with a gaze all f too familiar to you, Soleil. Mm -hmm. You can tell he's sizing you up, determining your level of skill. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna return the favor. <laughs> Just gonna stare back, try okay. and analyze him. What do you want to know? Wow, well, now I have to look what I can actually ask. Um, Give me a moment real quick. What things I could, could try and figure out. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay, I could... S s I guess... Uh, total class levels. And current hit points. Equal superior or inferior to me. His class level is superior. His hit points are as well, but only by a slight. I see some skill, uh, it seems. He then walks past you and with a wave of his hand that can only mean for you to follow, he crosses the bridge over to the entrance into the hall. Eblin will kind of give a slight bow towards the king and then turn um, to follow. As the Mithra-clad soldiers move to open the gates for him, he holds up his hand to stop them and turns back towards you. Um, may I say one last thing to the king? You can do so. Before you head off. You were wise to turn away the visitor. It was not just Polythrene that he wanted. There have been many visitors in many cities, all over Upper Sid. He gives you a curt nod, but no verbal response. Plodvir is the first to speak. Father, what? No, not here. You'll address me as general. I'm fielding you, Lodvir. You'll have your chance to prove your battle command in the vanguard. I'm putting you in charge of the 4th Division. 4th? But 4th numbers the least. 4th Division is an assault troop. They've seen real combat. They will not falter or rout. I've chosen them because their experience will make up for the lack of yours, Captain. Or would you rather take reservist? Six, perhaps, or no for general. I will lead forth. And then there is you, Lot. You all carry yourself with enough weight to matter for success. Temporarily, I will name you Dwarkagrund. Field operatives. You will act free independently from the ground forces. You will strike where you are needed and guide the battlefield. You are eyes and ears, vital to dwarves engaged in conflict focused entirely on their own. You are authorized to command their actions if you see fit. There are scouts of the fourth already on the peak. Captain, Head towards the barracks, muster the ground forces of the 4th, and head towards the peak. Ingvar will join as well. Wordlessly, Lodvio bows and pushes through one of the doors of the adjacent hall, not waiting for the guard to open the gate for him. 
For a moment, there is again this flood of light threatening to blind you before the door shuts again. I am sending you ahead to the scouts at the peak. Gather your things, your construct if you like, and head up the mountain pass. The scout leader's name is Narokaz. He'll be waiting for you there. You will have further information. You'll need to know what you're fighting. Appreciate it, General. If yes. we can be excused, then. He nods in a sort of almost bow, but not quite, and he starts heading back across the board. Evelyn will, without the guards pause, move. move and open the gate for you into the bridal. As you head out, you see Captain Flodvir still at the other end of the long hall as he currently exiting and stepping out into the city. As do you, I Have we, in our conversations from anybody in the town yesterday, to any conversations that we've had recently know where the path to the mountain is. Yes. Yes, we do. From up. Yes. The pathway that leads towards the peak is also easy to make out from everywhere in the city. It's the only path that winds higher and higher into the rock above the city, eventually leading into the mountain itself. Right, then perhaps a quick change of clothes and to more attire that's appropriate for battle and stopping by the docks before we head to the mountain. Yeah, it's going to be kind of an awkward walk through the city, I think, but kind of need him. We'll give them all a spectacle. Right. Also, when do you want to talk to Badar? Badar speaking to us um, is primarily based on his availability, not when I attempt to communicate with him. So I'll we'll just have to keep the skull out and available and hope that he reaches out to us in the interim. I have to admit, I haven't done this in a while. The computer's kind of refreshing, just being mute and staring menacingly, menacingly the whole time. Kind of, kind of missed that. <laughs> yeah. Dwarves and elves, long lives, long memories. I have no idea what they were talking about, to be honest. There's nothing that rings true to that in my recollection either. So, has anyone ever told us exactly what the masses we are expecting up the mountain there? Is it like some monsters going crazy, or what exactly is the mess that's happening? Yeah, the rumor were monsters, but I'm sure the scout leader will know more. And it sounds like possibly one of those dark knights headed up that way as well. Right. Yeah, I mean, he was probably the one who caused this mess, right? Which that's what they're saying. Which we might need to be possibly prepared to face him. All of them. Oh yeah. The last time we met one of those went well. I saw Vidar die a couple of times, it was kinda of fun. That's a perspective. Right, well, let's move. We'll head Evelyn will start walking back 
to the uh, where they've had rooms and stuff. Mm -hmm. Not for long, just intending to change into like more armor appropriate clothing and attire. You all head back to your rooms? Just pretty cool. Yeah. Can I wear my normal stuff again? Yeah. This is very uncomfortable. You don't have to walk like that anymore either. You looked great, though. I mean, Thanks. but to be fair, you always look great. Just like a scary great or a formal great. Yeah, I like the scary great actually. Yeah. Yeah. A little eagerly change. Eager to get back to <laughs> Vint. I guess for Soleil, it doesn't really matter. Because it's mostly just the mm -hmm. cape <laughs> that actually look different. So if he wears this cape or another one, it doesn't really matter to him. But guess he'll change in case he needs the nice looking one again at some point. Get the nice armor on. Oh yeah, uh, now for the first time trying on this new uh, serpent uh, uh, thingy, th serpent scale armor that we bought. I guess he's mm -hmm. fitting that on. Mm -hmm. mm, heading to the docks. Yeah. You head from the warehouse. through the city, the gates between every district open for you. With no issue, and eventually you reach the docks just down the ramp where the large warehouse is where you left Vint. As you approach, the workers in front of the warehouse eye you with hard eyes. You can see that compared to last time, there are boxes, a lot of boxes stacked neatly just outside the warehouse. As if there was either not enough space inside or they simply did not want to step inside there. Mm -hmm. Unenthusiastically, a few dwarves get up from the ground and wander over to the large gate, ready to open it. Everyone will head over without missing a beat. And you feel the scrutinizing eyes of the other dwarves as you move past them. And as you stand in front of the giant door, the dwarves pull the gate aside. But inside, you do not see Vint. Instead, there stands the giant stone statue of a dwarf, armed with a hammer and shield. Stranger yet, even though the construct looks unmoving, you could have sworn its head turned just a little bit towards you. Did they put uh, a costume on Vint? I will move my goggles of true sight on and move up to the statue. As you move into the warehouse close enough that you It's only I have to be like within fifteen reaches feet. the statue as soon as you get into the range of the statue, you see it sort of peeling away, and beneath the illusion, you see Vint. Ah, well, you will be the indoor Oscar. A voice rings out from the shadows in the warehouse, off to the side, and the dwarf steps outside, armored in a curious suit of metal. A prosthetic replaces one of his legs, and one of his helmet's lenses glows a deep ruby red. 
The name's Ingvar. This construct is yours, right? I mean, the necrotech underneath. It is, and I'm doing my very best to not take insults to the illusion. <laughs> it uh, was decided fighting with a necrotech will be bad for morale. I had it redressed. It's only a mere illusion. It won't hop all up to scrutiny, but it's enough for common soldiery. We'll probably never know. Very well. It's a simple seeming. It'll only ask for eight hours. And you'll have your bones back. You could have at least made it a no. <laughs> well, I knew you were Hindwar Asker. I did not ask what specifically you were. And I figured if we're worried about morale, perhaps it'll raise it if it's a giant dwarven. Huh. Are you coming along then? Or can we go? Oh, well, you can go. We'll see each other on the mountain, I'm sure. Great. Evelyn will fly up to the shoulder of Vint. Part of her seriously hoping that it completely blunders the illusion as she sits on his shoulder once more. You sit on the shoulder and... You are honestly a little bit impressed with the craftsmanship of the illusion. <laughs> it lines up almost perfectly with the most important pieces of the frame and edges. Okay. Alright, finally. Great. <laughs> Vint, let's move along. I shall order him to start heading through the city to head up to the mountain pass. I guess I gotta keep Doing up. Doing her best to not <laughs> try and cast dispel magic <laughs> on Vince. It's this itch. I guess I gotta keep oh, up appearance tempting. and uh, be your bodyguard and just climb up and stand on the other shoulder. No, As you no, march, this isn't about keeping through. appearances. This is about you liking to ride everything. <laughs> Look, you don't have to frame <laughs> me like this. <laughs> As you march through the city, even, of course, with a disguise, you still catch a number of eyes. Although this time it seems to be less in fear, there's a sort of amazement to the stares that you get. And in some corners, there are even a few people, a few dwarves, that clap as you pass by. Oh, tempting. <laughs> <laughs> There's the most, like, sour <laughs> expression on Evelyn's face right now. As so you tempting. <laughs> on the construct, <laughs> approach the gates on your way to the winding roads. They swing open for you without so much as a check from the guards. The last gate before the path winds into the rock looks a little different. Large gashes are carved into the stone of the wall. At the edges of some of them, the stone even looks slightly deformed, as if melted by immense heat of contact. The gate itself is pristine, newer than the others you've passed, likely replaced recently. But as the gates before, this one too swings wide open and you begin to ascend the winding path for what seems like a good hour. Eventually, the winding road turns into a crude staircase that leads further and further up. The warmth from the city below seems to vanish with every step, and before long you are surrounded by stone ice cold to the touch. You reach the point where the long trails of your clouded breath look so dense they almost seem like they could become snow right then and there. When an icy breeze 
pushes through and past you like the breath of an ice drake. Up ahead, around a corner of this staircase, light falls in. Real quickly, I'm going to make sure that Suxley is feeling okay in the cold. You see Suxley shivering a little bit, but it's no worse than what you experienced on the boat, at least at the moment. Okay. Angry? <laughs> How could you do this to me, brother? <laughs> <laughs> Evelyn was already pissed off before you did this. So, you all headed outside? Mm hmm. You step outside into a landscape of pure wine. For the first time in months, marking the end of your journey here, you have left the underground. There is no sign of the sun as you step outside. A veil of clouds hangs above the snow-covered landscape before you. But all the way up here, in the cold, clear air, you see the land surrounding Mount Aros for miles. You see the lake at the foot of the mountain. You see ranges of forest stretching south across the meadows until they reach a wall of blackened titanic tree husks that evoke uncomfortable memories of your first trip north. Further west the sky darkens more where you know the blight begins. A low dark fog akin to smoke hangs in the air there, obscuring your vision. But along the mountain ranges leading south you see even streaks of sunlight drenching the distant peaks in a warm bright hue Rick wipes his eyes a little bit cold out here <laughs> clearly very literally to be outside thank you quite the sight isn't it the voice from behind you almost makes you jump Behind you, sitting above the stone gateway hewn into the rock, sits a hooded dwarf in armor. Though compared to most others, the chainmail looks almost light and modest. He hops down, landing nonetheless heavy in the snow. Narokas, head scout, 4th division, I received word. I'm sure you have a lot of questions. For now, uh, let's... Follow me to the rest of my squadron. It'll be easier to explain when you see what awaits. The dwarf leads you further up the mountain until you reach a series of stone ridges where sharp edges of stone pierce through the soft cover of snow. You see faint signs of activity, furrows and tracks in the snow, leaving the clean blanket of white disturbed. And you almost think to see movement in the far distance, past and above the ridges that lie ahead. But also some much closer, laying in cover against one of the stony ridges. More dwarves await you. And Narakas turns towards you. Best be quiet from this point onwards. Get to the ridge, I'll show you around. Can you tell that thing to crouch? Right, Vince, let's crouch a bit and try and be quiet. In his current form, Vint crouching looks a little bit awkward. Perfect. 
but he does it <laughs> nonetheless. And Malika's lead dude is God. Once at the stone ridge, the scout crouches low and crawls to the highest edge of the ridge, peering over. And he motions for you to take place next to him. Then we'll sort of glide down from where she's been sitting on Finn's shoulder to go see what it is. So, you have any idea what you're up against? Had little hints or suggestions or vague comments. Right, so from the top then, we're still not quite sure what triggered it. Oh, we but know right that part. now the place is swarming with creatures over there you see them where the snow ends in the shadow of the rock can you roll me a perception roll everyone please? fingers crossed that it's something rideable okay <laughs> perception 16 10 15 Uh, 22. Oh, God. <laughs> nice. Then, Eros, Red, and Evelyn. You see it. It's hard to make out in the snow. The wind howling over the mountain carries snow with it at all times. But as you watch for a moment, you see them in the shadow. Beasts. A horde of beasts. Prey and predators alike, huddled close. Birds, bears, wolves. You even make out a mammoth and an ape covered in white fur. Where are they? Don't see anything. There is a few of these horns around. All the beasts here you can imagine. Some probably you can't. They're all from different ages and seasons. All died here on the mountain. You see that on top of the ridge? Small creature. Horns. That's a shepherd drake. They're the ones herding these beast hordes around the mountain. Probably to protect their master. That's our target. The end goal. A firebird. Evelyn and mm -hmm. Red, as you understand what he's saying, can you give me a quick history check? Well, 19. When he says firebird, you know he's using an old word. And it doesn't seem to translate well. What he's referring to is a phoenix. It should not be alive, but perhaps it's a descendant or something. Near a century and several decades before, there was a cloud giant on Mount Arus. The firebird was his companion, along with its tyrannical master it was killed though its body never retrieved unlike the giant we don't know how it's returned or if it is the same but it's flying around resurrecting dead creatures and they seem to be willing to follow whatever cause that bird has it's close to time it'll probably pass overhead soon you'll see it There are some creatures stalking around I have never seen in my short hundred years. It's staggering. And there are 
a few that I know all too well. On our first scout, we lost the whole squadron. There is a bear, a monstrous creature that has already caused much grief in long past years. We name it Bjorn. Its death was a day of celebration, and that it has returned, it's troubling. I've also not seen any of the Banoks that are native to this peak, and I fear the worst. Wait, it's just a bear? It's a very large bear. You'll recognize it. Its fur is as black as the night. Like how large? You see that squadron of dwarves over there, huddled together. Stack them on top of each other a couple of times and you'll probably be there. Right. That is an extremely unhelpful description. A blue hue suddenly lays over the white snow. Through the clouds hanging above you, like a comet, you see a streak of a passing blue light. And faint, you also hear a screech. There it goes. Watch the snow. Several seconds pass as light flies above the mountain and vanishes behind the other side of the peak. Then, you see something break through the snow. A brutish creature you had never seen before, covered in horns and a rocky hide. It shakes itself free of snow and dirt when a chirp rings out. From the top of the rib ridge, a shepherd drake chirps and the creature begins lumbering towards it. You see several others, too, that must have emerged from the ground. Snow hares, a ram, a wolf. So, any more information about this Shepherd Drake? You know any weaknesses? Well, it's a form of dragon, if that helps you any. It has a uh, protective influence over its flock. Alone, they're manageable. But they're not what we're worried about. They are the ones pulling the strings of these horde. So... What do you want from us? Sorry, are you finished with the description of the problem? Yes, unless you have any other questions. Any knowledge on the whereabouts of the armored stranger, Goliath, that fellow? We haven't seen him on our scouts. Not the first, not the last. All signs point towards him not being here, if I'm honest. But we haven't been able to push towards the peak, so if he's anywhere, he's there. Or, he isn't here. That brings us back to you. What do you want of us? Well, as I was told, you'll be fighting with us. As, is uh, your intent to take care of these immediate creatures or to move past them and head towards the um, firebird? Both. It won't be easy to get towards the bird. Fourth Division will be here shortly and we will begin a ground assault. We'll have to push through, but... 
likely on the way we'll be having to take care of all these beasts. Don't think they'll just let us pass. Okay. I understand you're to be field operatives. Dwarf husband. You'll be taking charge of the greater battlefield then. Likely the vanguard will push up the slope. But such as my scout squadron, you'll be able to command us where to shoot if you need us to shoot anywhere. I understand it is a tactic you may not be familiar with, but we dwarves have been fighting like this for years. When you're in the heat of battle, you lose sight of everything around you. You need several commanders on the sidelines, keeping watch, telling you where to go, what to do in the heat of battle. I understand that is what you are to be. Yes, we do have some more experience, probably, riding and in the air than likely many of you have. And whatever that thing is, sort of looks back towards the crouched stone dwarf. We'll call that our little secret. Vandalized secret, but sure. Yeah. Do you have any more questions about what awaits us? And any of our um, previous conflicts with these creatures has the Firebird come back? We haven't really had engagements with these creatures. The first scouting troop was wiped by Bjorn. It was quick and we've been careful since, not to overextend. Uh, so for this bear, would you count its head as ground? <laughs> <laughs> Classic. If it's that big. If we were in the city, I would take you to the manor of Lord Bauxon. He has the uh, skull of the creature mounted on his fireplace. Wait, it doesn't have a skull? This one does. <laughs> There's probably two now. Oh, that's a good point. Uh, Huxley here. Yeah, he's a bit of a druid, let's say. And is well able to emulate creatures, so don't shoot that creature if that happens. Right? Well, right. Yes. Well, from the other scouts, we'll be aiming where you tell us to, or whatever attacks, of course. Last time you had an encounter with Bjorn, um, did, you, did he just come from... Was he already there? Did he come from the mountainside or cave or something along those lines? It was close to the peak. That seems to be where the firebird is nested. So we approached the peak where the stranum loads lay. He burst from the snow. I wouldn't put it past him to have been lying in wait. The creature is intelligent for its feralness. I don't know. What about this uh, giant you mentioned? Was his body burned or...? Well, luckily, in this case, I assume, his body was brought down to high tier. It was destroyed 
as best we could. Say for its gem. There has been speculation that the gem mounted above the stone of throne may be what the firebird is after. It could very well be intending to resurrect its old master. Interest. Is there anything else you would ask? I feel like I have a deja vu killing an unkillable creature again. Worked. Hey. Last time, not at all. What? It leads can die. Then, as Naraka slides back down the ridge, You have a couple of minutes before the assault will begin. In which you can prepare whatever you would like. And also, we should probably take a 5 to 10 minute break. I'm gonna go pee real quick and get a drink. And That's I will good. be right back. Same. Questions, do we even have to walk over there? Can we just fly over there? Most of the creatures in those groups don't, don't seem to be able to fly. And we just go for the dragon. But yeah, I mean we can we can do the broom drop thing as a plan B. Like we are maybe it's good then w if Red and me are up in the air and if we deem it necessary, we can always drop the nuke on there. them. You could certainly do that. Because even if uh, I mean I can shoot arrows from up there to support everyone else. Uh, until we decide to maybe drop me down or whatever. That's true. I was going to say though. Also, it could be very helpful if, for example, Evelyn was seeing the battlefield from, you know, further up to be able to coordinate everybody. Yeah, I mean, Hux can also fly. Maybe we can like, uh, 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 Evelyn flies with you on the broom, and I ride Hux. That's fine with you, Hux. Yeah, yeah. Sure. It does as much as I might be able to see things from the field, ordering commands from a broom hundreds of feet away, and yeah. unless I'm shouting, uh, um, becomes quite difficult. Yeah, that's a good point. Mr. Narrowcast, how do you usually relay commands? You have like. A magic way to do it, or you just shout really loud? Oh, it depends on the composition of the army. 
likely it's a lot of shouting. For general commands such as reinforcements or retreats, there is horns. Right. There is only magical ways when there is a support squadron of mages. Which we do not have right now. Beggar, DM question. The rallying horn I have, can I blow it as a normal horn or do I always have to use its ability? Because I maybe could use that f for some, at least. Since it says you can expand a charge to blow the horn and emit the rallying call, mm -hmm. I think it means that it always does. Okay. Rally. Okay. And what if it doesn't have any charges left? Doesn't it just stop working? Like, doesn't it give any sound off? I would say if there's no charges left, it's a regular horn. Okay. Theoretically, we could use some sort of a banner with either colors or a symbol on it to relay certain commands. Otherwise, we're, we're just yelling. Uh, yeah. Uh, do you guys have, like... Okay, I noticed some people armed with what look to me like guns. Is that accurate? We have firearms and crossbows. Right. Do you have either crossbow bolts or bullets that are... Uh, I, I know how this is done. You use tracers to mark targets. I don't know how red was that. <laughs> well, there, there is such a thing as flare. Bigger technology. Theoretically, I have my smoke bomb. Could I yeah. attach a smoke bomb to the top of a crossbow bolt, but color the smoke? I mean, your crossbow does fire. Could they just shoot it where the fire bolts are going? Assuming that's the limit of the command that we're trying to give. Yeah. I would argue that you probably can, yeah. I could have some... Is there any way we could know what kind of commands we could give, Beggar? Attack. Charge, withdraw. For the basic forces, it will be much akin to them having a multi attack. And the second attack of that multi attack is yours to target. So it's targeting where their attack is hitting? Yes. Okay. So it is just as simple as shoot this. For the most part, yes. We could essentially just say a, a ten, uh, some sort of uh, a flare system using a bit of smoke and fire to say attack this over here. Uh, though probably technically Slay would be able to shoot further than ever I could. What, do you and Sile want to take the broom up there? I, I mean, I could make Sile invisible before, or if we don't want to worry about invisible. I could just ride bent and, you know, help him go where he needs to go. Ooh. Uh, as, as a crossbow, the, I think I have like 120... Uh, no, I guess 320 is a light crossbow, right? 
Did I write that right? It's a light. Um, well, I know that Longbow has like 600 maximum range. Yeah. Magic, so. Plus 300 I think it was Guns way and less than that. Crossbows have 400. I guess I'd probably fine with my crossbow then. Even if I mean disadvantage, sure, but if I'm just trying to ch target a general area, theoretically that would work. I don't want to ruin Soleil's fun. <laughs> Well, I'm mainly not here to have fun. I just okay. want to find out the way to get this over quickly. Right. Um. Also, Huxley, because you rolled on it and then we kind of moved on to other oh, stuff. Oh, sorry. Yeah. You <laughs> probably would have heard of Shepard Rings. You know that they are a flightless dragon. They're not like other dragon kind, where they are mostly herding animals, surrounding themselves with beasts that are charmed by them to do most of the hunting and protecting for them. You also know that they usually don't live entirely alone. Like, they're in pairs, or...? Usually there is more than one shepherd dragon. Right. And they can charm at least beasts. Uh, is there a phoenix and a shepherd dragon, or is the phoenix a shepherd dragon? Out of character. <laughs> They're, they definitely, I mean, you saw the light pass overhead. Yeah, it's a very it's most like I guess I will tell that to the others. And now... Are you uh, done with your preparation? Uh, uh, yeah, technically I should be able to shoot reasonably anywhere on this field. Um, minus, like, angles. So if it gives you more mobility as Rhett to be flying around, then that's probably best that you and Soleil are on the board. Probably most useful, yeah. I can stay near Vint, I can always fly it because I can fly independently myself as well if I need to get to a different angle and theoretically I should be able to shoot if we're trying to give commands uh, sort of a flare to where we're trying to target other units So does Huxley um, want to come along with us as a flying thing and assault from the air or what do you feel about Huxley? I think I'm better on the ground, unless you, we want to like skip over everything and just go to the. You, you could know, always that's... move with wherever I'm got vent going, or potentially potentially start mm -hmm. out with vent. Just kind of yeah. same positioning. Is this right size? What mm -hmm. size is vent? Vent is. Again, okay, That's a good idea. You could just look out for the okay. Um, okay. the ground okay. troops. You know. Cool, cool, cool. Things get too close. Yeah. So, uh, Eblin can stay back with Vint and um, Hux and then kind of move with the ground fort just flying above. And then you two could be far more mobile basing your decisions upon where things are happening. Okay. Yeah, uh, that works. Yeah. Hux doesn't <laughs> have a lot to add to the tactics, but just before rushing in, he will cast fire shield on himself. Sure, sure. As, as a preparation. Mm -hmm. As you're discussing your strategy, as you sort of come to an end, there's a couple of minutes where you're waiting around until you hear a horn 
from the direction you came. And you see through the snow. Several rows of armored dwarves and more scouts arrive. Led by Captain Lobby. Would everyone please roll initiative? As the dwarves arrive, you also see immediate reaction from the beast on the mountain. Almost all of them immediately turn towards the noise and you see the shepherd drake sort of rear the he its head up and you hear chirping which is responded by other I don't know that it'll matter, but a natural 20 on initiative gives me advantage at this round. Is that right? Yes, your first attack will be. Is it first attack period or first attack of the first round? It would be on the first round. Okay, I just I wasn't sure. Yep, it was. Same for the disadvantage on a natural. Sorry. What the crap is this initiative? Yeah, I don't know either. I don't think it surprised me. I rolled a four, okay? And I only have a plus five, so that's a nine. That's how, it w that's how math works, I'm sorry. That's how dice fuck me over sometimes. <laughs> Look, the <laughs> session started with a natural one for me. I didn't expect <laughs> anything more. I, I just want you to know, like, you got this, for and then you got this. Yes. And I'm just disappointed in you, specifically. That is totally fair and acceptable. <laughs> Understandable. Have a nice day. <laughs> I feel like that's perfect because I'm already sitting on the broom, right? To be yeah. prepared so I don't even have a, a very quick... True. Quick res... Uh, so! Red pons. You go first. We're going 50 feet up. And then, like, at an angle, 25 feet forward, and another 25 feet up. So we're like 75 feet in the air. Um, that's like my whole turn because I'm what's dashing. Mm-hmm. Even. Probably be like uh, fly up to Vin's shoulder for the moment just to get some height advantage at this. Vin's movement is 40. Um, probably just moving a bit forward this way. What is it to move over this ridge? It would be difficult to rain. Okay. Uh, would Hux have been initially sitting on Vint until heading off? I uh, guess, yeah, you would hold on to Vint. Okay. Then... Calling this that. abomination Vint is travesty. Uh -huh. Mm-hmm. I think can only get down here, kind of moving down the ridge. Um, unless he dashes, but I'm not necessarily trying to rush forward into combat. 
prior to them all moving. Uh, yeah, that'll be it for me and Vent. They're still really far away. Mm -hmm. Like a hundred feet away? About a hundred twenty-ish is this first one. Twenty is where it's hundred feet away. Yeah. So I think this whole length is under twenty foot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Depending on moving up that bridge, maybe about hundred twenty if you were just running. <laughs> closer. <laughs> Hello. How fast is Wint? Wint's 40 feet. Moving is 40 feet. I, yeah. Evelyn probably was like, let's see where they go, but you, obviously your own, your own person. The unfortunate side of being early in in uh, initiative. Yeah, I think Huxley is just itching for uh, uh, battle, so he will. He will jump off of Vint and Gash. Is that the direction, oh, or are you hmm. trying to go around the ridge? That is very close. Uh, <laughs> no, or he less. would just, he would just, he'll, he'll just go straight. Uh, yeah, if I get that close, I'll also rage as, as a bonus action. Um, <laughs> and draw a d8. When do we issue commands, Beggar? You can at any point during your turn. Since they move at the end of the turn, mm. as long as you do it before them. Okay, <laughs> but it would be like on my turn if I was the one or anybody else. I, since speaking is such a short thing, you wouldn't have to do it specifically on your turn, like with Okay. That's fine. Uh, so. I can teleport 30 feet. Oh. Uh, can I teleport on top of this dinosaur? Oh, you certainly can. Mm 
You Red. just see like, <laughs> it, like, uh, uh, Huxley like screaming, running <laughs> at full speed, and then suddenly there's like Oop. a black energy that like consumes him, like he enters a black hole, and then a black hole opens uh, uh, on top of the the creature, and he just pulls mm. back out. Mr. Lay, what does it feel like to be outdone? <laughs> Red, you you can you can you feel like Saleh is leaning a little bit forward, hmm. and uh, like I guess it's because it's so high up and there's like war going on. That he has to scream mm -hmm. a little bit and the wind, but he, what you can make out is something like I am so proud. <laughs> <laughs> like yes, there's that he probably feels quite a bit of jealousy, but he's also very proud of uh, Hux right now. a little bit but I think they would Okay. You know what? I'm gonna make something fun. Bonus action. I'm gonna pull out my rallying horn and blow it. And uh, if I counted that correct, all the dwarves are within 60 feet of me. So I'm gonna choose as targets all of them. I choose Red, I choose Ablin, and I choose Wind. Uh, sadly, uh, Hux is a little bit too far away, and uh, all of them make uh, uh, do have advantage on their next attack. Uh, in, yeah, in the next until the end of the next turn, but the first attack has or ability mm -hmm. check has advantage. And additionally, each of those allies can choose one to use its reaction until their turn. Basically, you could use your reaction right now to either move up to your movement speed without provoking opportunity attacks. Or you can end the frightened condition, if you have it, or you gain 1d10 hit points. We're For now, I feel high. like the movement uh, might help everyone right now. Extra reaction to move. I guess it's going to move forward. 10, 20, 30, 40, 18, okay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, yeah, that's uh, the bonus action from me, and then uh, let's see what the dwarves do. I'm excited to see if they move forward too. Okay, is there any commands? Uh, the spell command is specific to the scouts, as there are two squadrons of scouts, you can use this one twice. Same with this one for three times. The heavy infantry. Um, oh no, this is immediate. The ridge right here. How high is that? At its peak, the difference between this and here is probably about ten feet. Do, do they have so a way to over see it over it? Would it? Be difficult to make. But can they see Currently, over it? Currently, they cannot, as this is on its entirety a slope. Would they be able to see these guys up on the hill? No. Okay. So the only one they probably can see right now is this or up, one. Up, what do you mean by up on the hill? The, this one? Yeah, no, they do not see these. They currently see this. And probably in the distance, these guys. Um, yeah, probably ordering a hit here and a shot over there. Is it just one command kind of a thing to do? One per squad. Okay. And no squad, no commands for these guys since they're not in combat currently. But I guess the command for the uh, ranged attacks would be to try and shoot the the stegosaurus and then the animals further back. Mm -hmm. Once these squads become bloodied, you will lose their command. Okay.
Okay, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm still gonna use my action too. Yep. And I'll just shoot three arrows at Shepherd Drake number one. This one here. Mm-hmm. <gasps> no, 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 no! Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, yeah, the lowest is, uh, what do I have? Plus a lot, right? Uh, the lowest would be a 23 to it. All of those hit. So some very mediocre roads. But plus 21, that is 29 piercing damage, and I'm just thinking about adding something. Mm. No, it's fine. That's uh, that's all I'm doing. Although I roll once more because I get advantage from my uh, for one of those shots from my own rallying horn. Might be a crit. Okay, mm. no, it isn't. Unfortunate. Okay, that was my turn. Immediately, as you fire your first brush of arrows, you draw blood. The relatively small shepherd Drake yelps, and you hear it as it sort of begins to scurry away, loudly chirping again. Is that your turn? Yeah. Okay, so... Yay! And then the scouts are gonna take some shots. Second shot on the creature in front of your hits. Oh, oops, that's the one. This one. You rolled twice uh, for each of them, or what did happen there? They were probably out the of range. The first barrage hits this creature that Huxley is currently on. <laughs> Four, 22. And then the other one is at a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. so uh, and because of the rallying horn with the uh, normal roll, because th they would have advantage. I think he's still rolled low. Well, at mm -hmm. least it doesn't feel as bad. Right, let me see if the first one hits on this one. Then. Sure, I forgot about that. <coughs> and my just hit. Nice. Okay, just so noticed that that the horn is actually really good. Mm. <laughs> yeah, in this situation. Yeah, I I just read that like four times, and I was like, this might be good five. today. And then the far creatures. I have to roll at disadvantage, so the first one is still a hit. But I have to roll this one again. And the second one is also still a hit. Let's 
17 and 21. So this beast horn takes 39, no, 38. Tons of damage. Nice. And then they get to me. And we're back to the top of the round. Red. Just to... oh, yeah, I could just have <laughs> visibility now or in a minute when we get closer. Just do it when we need it. Maybe right. we won't need it. That's just like the plan in case we need it. In which case? Barely touch the edge of this. I don't know if I should target it or not, but I can definitely. So target. if more than half of a horde is okay. within the circle, Great. it automatically fails. Saving throw. Cool. Mm -hmm. Dexterity um, saving throw. Yep. Such as a Dexterity attack. saving throw is DC 18. Counts for your dwarves as well, by the way. Gotcha. Those two, and then I guess the hordes fail and roll the damage. So, the what kind of save is it? Dexterity. Yep. Three. Twelve. Or fail. Okay. Everything then takes 40 damage. 40 damage. Dishing out damage like it's nothing. Hmm. I want to play Ride of the Valkyries. <laughs> <laughs> you see this just hail of projectiles rain down. And you cause pretty devastating damage on the creatures within. As blood stains the fresh snow. Casual 200 damage. Okay. Uh, well, no, I didn't hit. I oh, didn't hit that one. Okay. Casual 160 damage then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, uh, bonus action Inspire Huxley, because he's gonna need it. So I'll give you a kind of explanation. <laughs> Go, Huxley, ride! Mm -hmm. Ride! Do me proud, boy! Yeah, that's better. So, would you say that if something were to barrel out of the clouds above you right now, that you would be surprised? Yes. Mm -hmm. Does Absolutely. it look like a firebird? No, not quite. Oh, oh then I am okay. surprised actually. <laughs> what on earth is that? Holy shit. It's 
It's an owl bear. That's an actual an owl actual bear. Wings. Yeah. Actual owl bear. Mm-hmm. So the first attack is a 15 to hit. Uh, me? This is... Second attack is a 21 to hit. It's... And it is also going to die, die. Oh, I just realized they're really stupid, but it's okay. Wait, how much damage was that? I'm about to roll it. That is 46 damage Ooh. with its sneak attack. Yes. As it barrels past you like a falling rock, striking you as it falls, and with a cloud of snow, it lands on the ridge. And that is its turn, which means, Evelyn, it is yours. Cool, 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 cool. Um... Um, how high is the ridge over here? I would say at the point where the celestial owlbear is about 20 feet. Okay. Um... What? Um, right. Eblin is going to fly instead of riding on Finn's shoulders. Um, here for a moment. Um, and do we have any more? Do you need a marker? Flying thing, like the... Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, oh, there they are. The back right there. I'm blind. Let me actually move this bank over here to the rest of the tools. There. The cones and stuff. That one's going to fly... I don't even know what this is. Like, oh, here, not. I think she's technically like 40 feet. Vint's like, how, I don't know, how tall is Vint? He's 40? About 40 feet, high. That's the brain, the number I is in my brain for whatever reason. Yeah. So she's staying at the height of his shoulder, kind of. Mm -hmm. um, but, and just flying away and then she's going to go ahead and <clears throat> um do, 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 do. he will Um, she will go ahead and shoot a firebolt at the shepherd drake over there. Mm -hmm. uh, with a mm. miss, spectacularly. Good old natural one. Mm -hmm, These order of operations, I don't remember. Did these guys move first or did these guys move first? These guys did, right? First. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, she's gonna order these two. 
to like attack there. Mm -hmm. And this one to attack here if they can get to it. Mm -hmm. And the. Let's see. Uh, both are again. Yeah, one archer to shoot the Stego again, and these archers to try and shoot the Shepherd Drake. I don't even know if they have sight on it or not, but based upon where things are, okay. try and do that. And Vince is going to move. Here, I don't think he can move any closer than that, unless you. It's not within range currently, correct? The Celestial Owl Pair. Vince Breach is. is it it 15? Uh. 15. And if you. Hold on, where's the thing? Here, right? So that's. Um, yeah, it would be 20. Uh, instead, he's just going to dash up towards it. Mm -hmm. So, moving up the piece yes. okay. next to it. And that is my turn. Okay. As you fire your firebolt, it hits close to the drake, but at just the right angle that it just sort of bounces and ricochets into the clouds above. And a couple seconds later, with another greed. Like a comet, another one of these comes down. It grabs hold of the chirping drink and flies over here. Hmm. At the moment, standing protectively in front of it. So this isn't like, oh, I'm going to eat the drake because we're cool guys kind of moment. It's, it doesn't seem to be eating the drake, no. It's disappointing, I'm just saying. I feel like a celestial owlbear would absolutely eat a shepherd drake. I don't feel like this is... I feel like um, they're metaing. They lost the charm roll. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure, sure. This guy is going to attack Huxley. So on the back, come quickly. It is going to attack you. Oh, first, it is actually going to use it. Actually, no, it can't do that yet. That's a bad idea. It's gonna whip you with its tail. Is a 26 to hit. Yeah, that hits. What do you mean? Isn't your armor class like 30 right now? <laughs> For some random reason? Yeah. Oh. That is 22 points of bludgeoning, which I believe for you is half, so 11. But please give me a strength save. DC is 20. Uh, yep. I think I have advantage. Or is that just on checks? Raging, I you can should... never remember. Raging, Raging should have advantage, I think. Hold on, let me double check. Okay. Well, I hope I have advantage. Yep. Saving throws as well. Check. Mm -hmm. Save. You save? Okay. It tries to buck you off as wait, it's swinging wait, around. No. <laughs> oh, okay. Save. Sorry, you, you are sounding a little bit robotic right now. What was that? <sighs> yeah, um. I got a 30. 13? Or 13? <laughs> I think it was 13 because he rolled a 3. Oh. Okay. Then 
Unfortunately, acid hits you with its tail and bucks around. You do fall prone and slide off its back. Turn you over for being prone. And that is its turn. Which means it is your turn. Someone roll for me. Sure, you, you said you have an advantage? Eight. Okay, so that's a 15. That just hit. Oh. Uh oh. Oh. That hit so hard. The oh. connection died. Still connected in tabletop. <gasps> back. Welcome back. Hello? You hit. You need us to stream so that you can run Discord. No. Uh, no. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Wait, it's not happy. It was fine for a while. Uh, but it's a D8 for the damage. It's a what? A D8. Okay. Plus 17. 21 would be the... Plus 17. Yeah, that should be one. Okay. And then attack again. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. 18. Eight. That definitely hits. Another 8 plus 7. 19. Okay. You cleave into the side of this thing, Did but you want to move? its hind is so thick, even though you've dealt a good amount of damage, it doesn't seem bloody yet. I will teleport mm -hmm. um, back onto its back. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Honestly, it's probably the safest place. Such a proud dad. I feel like getting hit by the tail is better than getting trampled. You've got so many things currently around you, I agree that's probably the safest <laughs> call. And I think that is my turn. And I will just restart my computer. Okay. okay. Let's see. I think for the moment this Shepherd Drake is just going to hide. Mm -hmm. This Shepherd Drake coming in. to move into the horde space right here. And it is going to use its protective roar.
You see both the horde as well as this creature be bolstered a little bit. A couple of wounds on the larger Saurian seemed close. And then Huxley is going to have to make me a save once he's ready. Adjust the HP value. What is the last shepherd drink? Hmm. I think he is going to do the same. 20, 30. And he is gonna target both of these with it. Protective roar. What the? That is uh, low roll. Dice? What the? Oh. <laughs> Did they just... My dice just vanished. That was so weird. Let me just... Uh... <laughs> there you go. I don't know where they went. Ooh. 19 on the second one. Yeah, these drakes need to die. Okay. You see that <laughs> this horde is trailing almost no more blood. And it is Celesta. Yeah. Uh Oh, by the way, Evelyn, when you shot that firebolt earlier, did you have adva did you roll with advantage? No, I forgot. Okay, because I'm gonna 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 do the horn again. Bonus action. <laughs> uh, you won't get the ones in the back now. The ro the rogues. I don't know what the the scouts, but uh, everyone else should be within range now, including Hux this time. So, reaction so reaction either to move to heal 1d10 or like to end the frightened condition. You did the healing. Unless you specifically tell Red to move, I won't take the hit. And uh, yeah, I wanted to give these. Uh, dwarven boys advantage for the next attack that's what we all have so I'm gonna shoot arrows at this shepherd drake as my action Welcome by. the shepherd drake itself is currently in half cover okay then I'm gonna shoot the one that's not in half cover okay because uh, By what the way Huxley would you mind making me a DC 15 con save or whatever you get? Yes, maybe someone else can roll. 70. Does a 19 hit? I have a plus 10, so 27. 19 hits? Then all of them hit. The advantage roll didn't uh, change anything about that 19. Okay. Wow, a bad roll. Uh, that is. Uh, do I add a superiority dice this time? Do I? Mm. Is there anything that could fuck with these? Nope, I don't add. And so that is 31 damage. Also, Hux, you can choose uh, to use your reaction. Bloodied. Nice. You can choose to use your reaction if you want to, to heal 1d10, or to move, or to get rid of Frightened. 
before you make that choice, did you save. fail or save? She saved. Yeah. Because Very then, simple. from the protective floor, you took 11 points of thunder damage. Maybe that impacts your choice, I don't know. Yeah, I'll probably heal. <laughs> well, the... Is that half or not with rage? No, thunder isn't. Ah. Uh. So I can heal a d10? Mm-hmm. If you want me to roll, it's a three. This is really <laughs> uh, A three? Yeah. Also, I'm gonna. Before I did all that, I uh, my head told me to do all this. Meanwhile, my heart told me to jump on that old <laughs> divine old bear and ride it. But at least this time, I'm gonna listen to my head and end my turn. Okay. Armies engaged. So, do the first advantage. High rolls. Mm. Holy shit, those rolls. <laughs> The initial assault of these two deals 113. Ooh. Ooh. But the board is not quite bloodied yet. And then these attack the horde in front of them twice. First one is with advantage. Second one is without. Ooh, that's a miss. The first one, dot hit. Or twenty six. These guys you told to attack this creature, and these guys you told to attack the Shepherd Drake, which is now in cover. Mm -hmm. So they are going to instead target the Celestial Owlbear in front of him. Mm -hmm. The first to attack. Hit. Oh, they, didn't they did not. Hit. Owl bear, one of which misses. The 
Saurian takes 51 points of damage, which does make it bloodied. And then, of course, the hordes retaliate. This one is even going to stampede into this army, which means that their attacks are now made at advantage. Messaging me in the middle of the and <laughs> Oh. It's Yusuf. <laughs> wow. Thank God that's an advantage. Oh my god, are you kidding <laughs> me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh my god. That's what you get for having advantage. Wow. What the fuck is happening <laughs> right now? Wait, I'm this, happy. This horn is cursed! What that's is what you on? that's what you call oh <laughs> that's what you call misses. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna roll a couple more times. I wanna see. If no, it's it's just. There we go. Oh it was just uh, a justice. I'll just roll that for the other horde then, I guess. Was that Hardly six folk, on the first? Dwarf. Oh, you have to actually One, roll two, for the other three, horde. Yeah, that was three. Okay, so um, the beast horde stampedes inside, but all the dwarves pull up their shields, protecting okay. themselves, Better whilst breathing. they are still sort of within this quadrant space, they <laughs> did not deal any damage. Then the other hordes are gonna attack. <laughs> that is... two hits. Fifty-six damage on these lords. And then one more beast for Hmm. That's what I meant. Some hit yes. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Look, Bega, no one likes you like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That felt really bad. <laughs> I figured. And these guys take 63 points of them. Are they looking bloodied or no? Not yet. And we go back top of the round. Oh, because it is the end of the third turn. Ingvar arrives. Look at that boy. Better late than never. Look at those guns. Let me see what the first one is. It's a good one. I don't know if it will hit anyone though. Red. Yes, I will. Your turn. Fly. A little bit, um, like shakily? Evasively, let's say evasively. Uh huh. Uh, over the hordes. Uh -huh. And then turn to Blue Tiger. Feels like time. I cast greater invisibility. What to drop me into this mass of animals? I figured you could like glide. I don't know. It's up to you. Directly to open melee. Let's go. And let's see. I don't think I can do anything super useful. 
You were no. super useful in the lab. Uh, with my bonus action is what I was gonna say. Um, yeah, oh, so let's yeah, I will point out we are still 75 feet up in the air, so... Well then... If Soleil like takes a jump action and glides, I'm sure you could get somewhere. Basically anywhere he wanted to. I mean, I can just slow my fall. I don't know if I can actually steer in the air. <laughs> you know what? One way it to find out. It has flyby. It's gonna swoop. And it's gonna follow. I guess wind can. And it's gonna go after red. Fly by means for How wind far can, can it fly? Oh. It's got 90 feet of flying speed. But it was on the ground. It was, I mean, this ground here is 40 feet off. Huh. It's cheating. Yeah. Advantage, nor does it get sneak attack. It also can't dive, so no skydive. It is going to make two regular attacks. Oof! Yeah, that is. <laughs> keep, keep on running! Only one's good. Oh, I should have made, made a wing attack then. Is its claws twenty two points of damage piercing. And that's its turn. You're, you're, you're visible. <laughs> oh no, I'm sorry. Oh man. But not really though, maybe a little bit. <laughs> Evelyn. Are these guys fly- is this one flying now? Yes. Or? I should put it on a flight stand. You're right. Amazing. Was a nice time being invisible. Yeah. Well, uh, to be fair, you're close enough to jump onto this. So this thing is like beside us now. Yeah. Ish. I would argue that it is within jumping look, distance. Look, it's still head versus heart. Don't tempt me. Tempting you, the giant celestial owl bear in front of you is tempting you. That is true. But you making it sound so awesome doesn't help. I believe. How high up are they? Uh, 75 feet. 72. Uh, I'm gonna go up to. I'm gonna dash and get up to there. Is what? And between the movement and my dash, I should be able to get just a smidge higher than them. Okay. I wanna be like up at like 80 feet. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and tell like this group to attack them, this group to attack them, this group to attack them. Like the one that needs the horde mm -hmm. in front of them. Um, the archers here, I would say to go ahead and attack this drake. And these archers here to attack the. Dire. Yeah. Whatever it is. 
Triceratops. Uh, yeah, Triceratops. There's the word. It's a Glaciosaurian. I find the yeah, Glaciosaurian. Yeah. That. Actually, I take it back. This group here, I'd rather have them attack the... Albert? Oh, yeah, the Albert. And... The event is going to move over and I'd try to attack. Okay. They don't. I don't need to give them a command. Are they acting on their own? They do currently have a command you can give them, which is for them to cast the Death Ward. Which is touch, right? Yeah. <laughs> can they cast them good. themselves? They I guess. certainly can. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, guess. I don't think nothing. I can reach anybody else with, with that. Okay. Um, does it go they away after this turn? The Death Ward? Yes. Okay, yeah, just cast, cast it on themselves then. Um, Vince will attack white. Oh, with uh, that, did Vin get advantage? Uh, was in range. A question for I don't know if you have to pick. What does Vin get? Does he have advantage from your blowing your horn? Uh, let me see. Where was where were we when I okay. blew it? I think You're we were right. still over yeah. here. Oh, yeah, then Vint yeah. would have. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. The first attack has advantage. That'll be um. Jeez, <laughs> stupid numbers. That's stupid numbers. It's like fifteen plus twelve and yeah, nineteen plus twelve. The 31 to it. Misses! The first attack does... Does it matter between bludgeoning and thunder damage? It does not. Okay. So the first one is... Seven. That's 37 damage. The second one is 47 damage. That is the end of my turn. <laughs> so Vince slams twice into the side of that thing. Aiming to and miss Huxley. Mark Huxley, you distinctly feel things breaking mm. underneath you. Its hide, its bones. This thing is barely standing. After that. And this one there. Gonna fly over here. Let's go off the drink. And that is 20, 30, 40. gonna fly all the way up to Avon, but that is his dash. I am... you absolutely can, I'm just remind, making it yeah, that I am like here with 90 feet and then with a dash. It goes yeah, 90 yeah. feet up towards... I know it will, I was just reiterating, I'm at, I think I'm like at 90 feet right now, technically. Or 85, 85. Was it? 80? 80 feet. 80, I believe. 80 feet. You'll get there one day. Mm -hmm. And then this one, I mean, it's gonna do one last desperate attack against the wind after the end. Sure. It is 
going to swing with its tail and then stomp. Well, actually, hold on. That's only against prone tiles, shit. Mm. And it's gonna swing one. I should have tail. mentioned it technically needed to make a strength saving throw or be prone on each of those attacks. Don't worry about it, it's got pretty high con and advantage. Okay. Is a 19 to hit. Uh -huh. uh, no advantage, no nothing. Thirty-seven bludgeoning damage. Uh, is this from a magical attack? Its attacks do not count as magical, no. Half damage then. Mm-hmm. Thwack! Against like, and that is their turn. Huxley. Yes. So the creature that I was standing on is dead. No, it's, it's barely, barely alive. Ah, okay. You felt a bunch of bones break. It's like limping. Take it out. It does not have the energy to even huck you off anymore. It's just swinging at wind. So many ones. That is a 18 to hit. That'll hit. Yeah, you have advantage on the first attack. Oh, yes. I always have advantage because of reckless. Oh. Double uh, advantage. Just endlessly reckless. All the time. Well, mm. oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh yeah? That is That's 27 damage. 27 as your pickaxe sinks into its side. With a few of the ribs broken, you pierce deep enough to puncture a lung, and the creature slams down. Motionless. <laughs> like, thumbs up to vent, like, good job! <laughs> and then I'll turn around and run towards this, like, huge horde, <laughs> and I will teleport onto the flying thing. I to How far can you teleport? Uh, which flank? Well, like the the owl bear is yeah. seventy-five feet up. Oh, it's seventy. Okay. Uh, okay, I cannot teleport onto that. There is a drake in the middle. I'm not to see that. Yeah, there is a shepherd drake oh, in the middle one? of this yeah. horde. In that case, I will. Teleport but if you the are there. inside the horde, which you can be in its space. Well, actually, you take attacks at advantage anyway, so that doesn't, <laughs> doesn't, matter. Matter. That doesn't actually matter at all, so yeah, 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 no, you go ahead. <laughs> you do you. R like, run towards the port, and where I hit the first creature, I will just teleport, get onto the Shepherd Drake, and make an attack against it. Okay. Uh, that is a 25. That'll hit. For 25 damage. <laughs> it's starting to look bloody. Bloodies. Mm -hmm. Um, but these drakes are pretty strong, right? The drake? Yeah. Um, it's only quote unquote a large creature, but it's got some pretty sharp horns. Yeah, no, it's my turn. Okay, 
Well, in self-defense, the Drake is going to retaliate, of course. It means attacking does not get a charge, but it gets one ram attack and two claw attacks. Oh. Yeah. Ooh. I see a crit in there. Oh no. Mm -hmm. oh no. What is your AC currently? That is a 19, and that's 20, and an 18 to it. It's a 20, so only one hits. The nat 20 is the only one that hits? <laughs> yep. God, and you were worried. Like two normal hits. I will. This is the roll of the crit. Do you have your fire shield up here? You take 20. Oh, yeah! 20 points of slashing damage, which is halved, so you take 10 points 10. of damage. Okay, it will take. <laughs> <laughs> it will take 8 fire damage, and then also I will use my reaction to activate my brace. And I will. Hmm. If I set it on fire. Although, no, I am currently resistant to fire, so that should be fine. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Does the creature look more dexterous or more like. Strong. Um, from a quick glance that doesn't require an action, about the same. Mm. It's relatively bulky. It's sort of, you know, balanced. It's a drag. Physical build. Yeah, I tried to set on fire. That's why. I don't have to fire. Could it make a DC 15 save? A, uh, what was that save? On? Dex. On. Dex. Oh, Sorry, Dex. Dex. No, Dex. I couldn't hear what you said. You were, you went super speed munchkin um, for a second. Yeah, it failed. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, it takes another... Ten fire damage. And it is now on fire, so it has to. It, it will take like fire damage on each of its turns. Can it spend an action to put it out? Yes. Okay. I just don't know if it's like mentioned in the description. Um, well, okay, says, well, you returned it's... twice the damage it dealt you, so. It says and a creature within real reach bad. of the original attacker can use an action to extinguish flame. So I don't know it itself because it says specifically a, a different creature. But uh... also, it does make a save. It repeats the saving throw each turn. Yeah, it does. Ah. Repeat. Well then, it is still the Drake's turn, and let's see this one has not done its protective roar yet, which it is going to do. Targeting both these beast hordes and these two dwarves. Well, that's uh, not nice. Great. So... Let's see. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> these guys in the back casting Death Ward. <laughs> hey man, you gotta be careful going out there, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, two consecutives. Two roots. <gasps> First one fails. Second one succeeds. So, these guys take 23. These are the guys that haven't taken any damage, okay. These guys take half. And they're also not yet bloodied. But the two beast hordes also get some health
Wow. <laughs> oh, both great. Nice. That is Shepard Drake's turn. It's late. Okay. Many things are happening right now here. Is this Shepherd Dragon cover? Yes. Hiding this behind the hold. This one? From your angle? No. Okay. Cool, cool. Because a couple things happen at the same time. So first, he's gonna blow the horn and he will get everyone except the casters in the back. So everyone can choose again to either move, heal, or get rid of fear, and has mm -hmm. advantage on the next attack. Um, so you're doing this before attacking? Uh, before attacking, yeah. So I get uh, myself some advantage on the first attack. He won't want to move, right? Um, also, I, also the I movement is, uh, is without provoking opportunity attacks. Exactly. Hmm. Clever. Um. Yeah. Good horn. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is also the kind of battle where it really shines. Drop down a little bit as well. Yeah, I am. Dropping. Dropping down to 45, so I'm probably about even a bit he's higher. Also, after I blew the horn, then the invisible all happen happens at once in a turn, right? So. It yeah. was well, basically like that is the time I blow the horn, Red reaches back, makes me invisible. I'm preparing to jump forward to jump towards that owl because he wanted to climb it next. And then he realize notices that Red gets hit, drops invisibility, flies what? away, <laughs> and then Soleil has to re uh, evaluate the situation. <laughs> It's uh, like you, you, oh, you oh, reasonably oh. could jump off at any point during. The I know. I mean, but I won't. I will shoot the shepherd Drake. Which one? This one. Mm -hmm. I would say, <laughs> even if it were outside of your range, given the height advantage, you get no normal rolls regardless. Righty. So you set the wor word advantage, right? Oh. <laughs> Unless you give <laughs> yourself advantage. I mean, on one no. row. I mean, all of them hit because the lowest is a 23. Yeah, so I guess are. I'll re row one to see if there's a crit. Nope. nope. This time I'm gonna add s one superiority die at least. And make it uh, Make it a distracting strike. So the next, uh, whoever tries to target uh, the thing has advantage. The next attack against mm -hmm. it has advantage. Uh, decent roll. That is uh, 45 damage total. It's looking very bloodied. 
And uh, I think, I think, uh, I guess uh, the the horn doesn't specify when they ha can use the reaction, right? So uh, let's just pretend that Red used this reaction like a second later or something. So I had the time to jump on this thing. <laughs> You really want to do it, huh? I do. Give me an acrobatics check, please. Acrobatics? You just grab its paw while it's battering me. That's a 29. You managed to <laughs> leap grab onto its very fluffy neck and swing yourself around to its back. Distracting it from red. Uh, and then I'm gonna start using the rest of my movement uh, climbing up its back. I wanna sit in the neck area. And that's where you are anyway. Oh, okay. I thought I uh, had to like climb up because it was our height and was flying like. No, you did jump. <laughs> okay. Leapt across. Nice. And uh, then that is my turn. Okay. So first things first. The dwarves doing some attacks. And of course. A few in the back doing a little uh, self death warning. First one is also the advantage. Uh, yeah, the advantage. Good exactly. thing that was with advantage. <laughs> I'm just gonna roll all three advantage attacks first. Stand out of it. Okay, the first attacks from all of the ones hit. Secondary attacks. It's a miss. One miss. Guys, take fifty-one points of damage. And the horde in the middle only twenty-seven. And they are also the most hurt. They are looking close to bloodied. They're not quite there. And then these guys. So much math I have to do. <laughs> There's only Go one person to blame. It's true. They take 56 points. And then, uh, where was these guys first shot aimed? I know these I think guys at were this one. the owl there. One I of them was targeted, yeah. I think one of them targeted this drake. Yeah, one of them was the, that drake there. Shift their attack to this creature. Because firing into this melee, really bad idea. Which one was sitting on the ridge between the two, like here? That was as well. Yeah. Okay. But it's in full cover now. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Right. 
we roll the owl bear first. With the owl bear, uh, it's fun. Yes. Uh, Soleil. Yeah. There's a sudden, like, Fuck. noise as you just hear arrows and bullets whiz past you safely on the owlbear's back currently. But you feel the impact of a few of them as the owlbear takes 24 po 34 points of damage. And then also attack the last Saurian. And that's a miss and a hit. Twenty-one damage. And now for the retaliation. First, let's see if this beast horde is still cursed. They make their attacks with advantage. No longer cursed. Oh man, they are really not cursed anymore. That is three hits. I'm gonna just roll, since these don't have a plus, I'm gonna roll all of these at the same time. It's a disgusting sound. Holy mm -hmm, shit. Mm -hmm. They Jeez. deal 71 points of damage to these mm. dwarves. They bloody now? They are indeed bloodied, and you lose your battle command of them. Next beast board makes its attack. Ooh! You know what? I'm gonna roll one of them at disadvantage because of that net one. And it's actually a miss. Okay, so it attack only hits once. If we lose the battle command, does that mean they mm. only attack on themselves? And they can only be commanded? do their own attack. Okay. okay. At least they still do so. These guys are also bloodied. Okay. <laughs> What's their armor class? It is 18. So right now, all three of the melee units are bloodied. Okay. And that resolves the armies back top of the run. Actually, hold on, these guys are getting 10, 20, 30. What kind of spell they roll? Do have a choice. To either do a spell command or a fortification command. And uh Rat? Yes, it is there. It's your turn, baby. Is there somewhere that I can get in this general area to be within 30 feet of Evelyn, Slay, and Upsley? Oof. 40 feet up, so that works. There's still 75 feet up. Probably not. No. Okay. And I'd be you get Slay, you can get Evelyn, but you cannot get Huxley. That's fine. 
I think but I if you get Huxley and Evelyn, you cannot get Soleil. I will get Evelyn, Soleil, and myself mm -hmm. with a casting of aid at 6th level. Which is... Twenty-five hit points. Ooh. To your maximum. And in my case, twenty-five hit points purely. Um I would guess that I'd be like moving here, doing it, and have some movement still. Mm -hmm. Knowing what I know, would it be possible to fly my broom inside of Vince's ribcage in the illusion? Just like fly straight into the you chest of the illusion. You can sort of hide, sort of you know behind the shield, which isn't actually there, or close to its chest. It doesn't really have an open rib cage. The the construct. Wind itself oh, oh, is I see, like I see. somewhat solid, but you could yeah, definitely okay. sort of hide in the in the illusion. Uh, yeah, I'll take myself. You wouldn't up. be protected by ribs or anything. Right, right, I'm looking for, like, concealment, not really. Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah. So, basically tucking myself as close to Vint as possible. <laughs> yeah, all right. Wherever he goes. Um, I can ride along with him with his movement, that's totally fine. You can you can probably just jump onto him and, like, with your broom, hold onto his ribs. Mm -hmm. yeah. How does the illusion look from inside to red? It's like probably that weird when you have like part of your face underwater and then part of your face out. Yeah. Like a clipping error in a video game. Uh -huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nasty. I wasn't gonna say it. <laughs> okay. Is that your turn? It is. Then this owl bear. Hi there. Two ways it honestly probably didn't even notice you that way. Yeah, didn't do anything yet, just it's clinging to it. Seventy five feet up. Did the albears go before me? One of them does. Okay. Hold on, I lost my count. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm totally not using a hypotenuse calculator. What calculator? The angle hypotenuse. trajectory. Okay, mm -hmm. that's actually enough. It is going to do a straight dive bomb down onto these scouts. You hold on for your dear life, Soleil, as it begins just a dive bomb. Yeah, hit the ground on the back, which is surprisingly soft. And see, But it's fine because that's the skydive, anyways.
And it deals 32 points of damage as it does land. Ripping through the scalp. And now it's your turn, Adlin. Ooh, cool, 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 cool. Um... Question, how tall is the horde? It's very mixed. I think but the like, tallest creature in there is probably the mammoth at about for range purposes. High. I'm trying to figure out what is the height of the horde. On if average, 10 ish. 10 ish. That's exactly what I needed using my own hypotenuse calculator. <clears throat> now, haha, the hypotenuse calculator. <laughs> um. <laughs> We are we we all love the hypotenuse. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I'm going to uh, ah! fall. I'm going to fall. No, I'm going to fly quickly down here to only like five feet up in the air still. Mm -hmm. Um, and I am going. Oh, oh boy! A hundred feet. Oh God. So that should hit all of them in that uh -huh. line. <laughs> Shoot off a lightning bolt. <laughs> I need dex Nice. <sighs> the DC <clears throat> is 18. As I release the surge from my lightning generator. Dex save, dex save. Three. Shepherd Drake saves. No, who rolled that? I did. Who, who? Hands off! It's my dice! Ah, you duke! That's, this is your fault! <laughs> How dare you! Hey, 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 hey. Curse it! 13 plus. That's 6 on that one. What was, what was the DC? 18. 18. So. The Shepherd Drake saves, the Saurian saves, this Shepherd Drake fails, and the Hordes fail. <laughs> Automatically. Uh, it's 30 damage from my lightning bolt. Mm -hmm. uh, half if they save. So 15 if they save. This beast horde is also bloodied now. Okay. This drake is looking real bad. Perfect. So is this one actually. Both of these basically look the same, which is very, very hard. Wonderful. Um, the let's put back here. They could, mm -hmm. uh, I guess, opinions from people. We could do erupting earth. On the central horde, they would take 3d12 bludgeoning damage on a failed deck save. Can I they upcast it? The hmm? Can they, they upcast it at ninth, ninth no. level? <laughs> no. Um, they could do it on the drakes. Um, they, yeah, they could probably center it over here and hit more of them. I just. They'd have to be careful to not hit this horde, or our own horde. Mm -hmm. Or we can do fortif fortification of a command, where they regain some hit points for one round. I feel like they're really bloody tricks, but... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we could probably do a... Uh... Where's the cube? Cube, cube, cube. Cube. Uh, 
they might move though because they are they have their turn before that happens. They right? do have their turn before it happens, correct? Correct. You can also change your command when that happens. Oh, can we? You don't necessarily need to do your command now. Okay. Um, I will hold off on that then. Um, yeah. And then we'll hold commands until things finish moving. Then we'll move. How much movement would it take to get down this hill? The slope? Good. For wind, it's probably regular terrain. Just like a chore's done. Yeah, you can get over here. Um, he's gonna go ahead and make one hit at the Drake and one hit at the Horde. Ah, uh, he's just gonna make both hits at the Horde. I don't wanna hit. Uh, okay. Those, I think, should both hit. There's the lowest is a 24. Both of those hit? Uh, difference between thunder damage and bludgeoning? Nope. Uh, both hits are 55. Oh, plus. Uh, 69 damage. In total? In total, between the two hits. Okay. Sixty-nine, nice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This beast horde is now also bloodied. Uh, that is. That's my action. I don't want. I don't have a bonus action. That's my turn. Let me get out my hypotenuse calculator. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Listen, nobody cares about me, Beggar. Sky Dagger. Wing attack. Let's see if it hits. Okay. And that uh, probably hit. No, 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 hold on. I forgot team. about my please no what? DM uh, hold on. reaction. That would have been plus eight instead of. Well, that wouldn't have really it's matter. It's still gonna hit me. <laughs> my DC is 18. <laughs> or my AC is 18. So. The. How much um, aid was that the other when you. 25. 25. I foresaw this eventuality. <laughs> <laughs> It's actually not that much. You hey. take 20 points of bludgeoning damage. You are also pushed back 10 feet. And you push me prone. into the horde or? Kind of. Horde. You're kind of where they both okay. fight in the middle. I see. It's like some clanking right above you. Mm -hmm. And. That is all it do this turn. Yeah. <clears throat> so it is also these. Oh no, they don't. They'll probably just attack with the horde. Mm. 
these guys look very not good. And uh, that is their turn, Huxley. Huxley will attack the dragon. He is still on. Mm -hmm. That is a <sighs> almost that turn. Twenty-six. And twenty thirty twenty. Both of those hit. Four. Yeah. And the first Shepherd Drake dies. Nice. Uh, <laughs> in that case, I ask you, is this one the Albert flying? Or oh, on it's the firmly on the ground right now. Oh, is that the one that lays on? No, actually, it's the other one. Okay, I will, I will jump onto that Alver in that case. Like, uh, <laughs> run across the, the, these, this horde, jumping from creature to creature, and then teleporting 30 feet onto the Alver. Okay. You sort of land on its back between its shoulder blades. Yes, you teleport. Anything else? Uh, no, that's my turn. Soleil. <clears throat> I don't know if there is a moment that Soleil sees Hux teleporting on top of the uh, other owl bear. Probably not. But if he would, you could see a thumbs up from him. <laughs> Of course, an action. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> and bonus action. Um, I don't think talking to these would make ma make a lot of sense at this point. So I guess I'm just fighting. I'm just gonna use action search. There are two natural ones in there. <laughs> Does a 15 hit? Can you roll me? Hold on. Uh, a d20 real quick. Just for those net ones. Eleven. Okay, next attack against you has advantage. Okay. Does a fifteen hit? Does a fifteen it does hit. Okay, then five attacks hit. For all of these. Uh I will I will also add superiority die. Look at that ominous cloud of dice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look, uh, looks so weird. It was like. Also, mm -hmm. I will also make a goading attack. Uh, Pretty goaded. And a menacing attack. So it ha also has to make a DC 18 wisdom save and another DC 18 wisdom save. That's 
was not a roll because it lagged. Okay. Wisdom, don't you know that owls are wise creatures? That's fine. And bears are very unwise, so it probably cancels out. Cancels out. Uh, uh, first, I have to uh, do some other uh, math thing. Okay. Plus 30. Okay. Uh, there is, is there a double? No. No, no double. Okay. Then it is just 69 damage. 69. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so you see this owlbear crash into the scout and just kind of ripping. And then it just slams down. Because <laughs> it dies. <laughs> Oh, okay. As you just <laughs> stab its back until it stops moving. Amazing. Um, is Guess no saving throws attack? necessary. Yeah, there's no saving. That's why I waited. I was like, oh, it's one of those attacks, you know. Um, I. Did use my bonus action in that, so that's okay. that. So yeah, that's oh, my turn. What commands before it begins to resolve? Do you give? We can go like here with the erupting arm. Uh, does that work for people? Right there, this cube. Um, and is the scouts, is this range group, are they bloodied? No. Okay, so, Damaged, but, not but all of the, all of guys the Vanguard is um, bloodied. Then I guess this one, maybe shoot at the Triceratops thing? Mm -hmm. This one... Also shoot at the Triceratops. And the erupting earth in that cube. Okay. So let us resolve the frontline fighters first. They are still gonna make their own attacks. Which are three hits. Okay, and which were the spots attacking? Yeah. Was two of these? Both, yeah, both of them both were attacking. Of them. A concentrated strike, damn. Uh, natural 20. Oof. Oof, one miss though, in return. Basically balanced each other out. Basically four hits. Here we go. That is damage. 95 damage on this thing as a barrage hits it in its side. It's definitely bloodied, but it yet lives. And then comes the erupting earth. Which is a dex save. 3d12 bludgeoning him. The ground also becomes difficult terrain. Um, okay. 3d12. That is 22 points. 
points of damage. This horde is now also bloodied, which means all three beast hordes are bloodied, which is convenient timing because they are about to attack. They still roll with advantage as they're occupying that space, but it appears that luck has left them. Yes, they hit three in a row. They hit twice. Those are advantage rolls. Oh yeah. But they only do half damage. Since they're bloodied. Which is still 35. Which... Is that enough? That's enough to wipe this squad out. Oh, no. All of them wounded or dead. This war, there is no winner. War. War never changes. <laughs> oh god. Please. Okay. So Just delete them already. Except for the. Um, I think I rolled another zero. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're not looking very good. And then... Forward. I accidentally cl clicked so fast, it didn't take the first one. The first one was a miss. It was a two. And I already clicked it. Even though I could press so fast, mm. it would not recognize one of them. Well, these two also not looking too good, but I think we all expected that. Yep. And that is their turn. the reinforcements. The king. That is the king. Shining, shimmering in silver mithril with the royal guard. Mm. And we roll over top of the round. The red. Yeah, we need to clean this up. Yeah. Wait, where's the, where's the measure? Is it? What's he doing? Oh, What's awesome. he doing? Shooting! Maybe. Mm, it's not really worth it. Unfortunately. Actually, that's not bad. Um, so I can target a Conjurvali like uh, back here ish. Uh huh. I hit these, I think. Is it a it's, a it's a it's a sphere, yeah. How big? That's forty big. feet. Oh. You already made one? Not quite. Let's go up. 10, 20. Is it 40 diameter or radius? Radius. It's 40 it radius? Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. 
That's how many got to you. Okay, so it's 10, 20, it's 30. This would be. Yeah, that definitely looks like you can hit all three of those. Yeah. Without hitting the dwarves. Dexterity save 18. I'm not gonna mention that there's probably <laughs> some still injured dwarves on the ground there, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding you. Fine, it's fine. Just roll. I mean, after this, there aren't. <laughs> Listen, there's a thing called collateral then. That's 48 damage. That's some nice dice rolls. Do some math and... Pekka knows all about this. He's killed more familiars than I can count by now in my campaign. Mm. I understand we're technically allied to the dwarves. How do you now? Technically. Okay, these two are not looking too good. And I will burn a section. And another heal of fire, one of the hordes goes down. Inspire Soleil. Hmm. You've ridden the bear, now ride the. Rhino? Aye, aye, Captain! Did Lodvir do anything during this fight? He's giving commands. Okay. He's just there as a representation that he's in this mm -hmm. part of the group. He doesn't have his own. Uh, I think this is the one that died. So it's Evelyn's turn. Stand up. Mm hmm. Uh. I'm gonna go ahead and fly back up uh, 30 feet. Uh, using action to shoot uh, fire bolts into this crowd. Mm -hmm. That's the uh, 16 to hit. That hits. That's super cool. And fire damage. <clears throat> and I'm gonna have Vint move a bit. He's gonna take one strike at this group again. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm definitely gonna hit it. Plus 12, so 30 yep. to hit. Um, that is 34 damage. Are they still up? They are. Gonna make a second strike at them. Okay. Um, that would be... 20 to hit. That hits. 54 damage. And that is enough. 
Then he's gonna turn and look at. Kind of, you can't do anything else. But he's gonna turn and get right up in the celestial albers. Mm -hmm. And um, that is mine and Vince's turn. Huxley. Yes. You notice as the owl bear shoots off of the ground, flying straight towards the peak, that it is fleeing. Do you still remain on its bank? Yes. Okay. I'm assuming no attack of opportunity, correct? No, fly by. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Off the map. Yep. Okay. Bye bye, Hux. It's. Oh, it's flying. She's probably fly at this point also gaining a bunch of height, so it'd probably still be like on the map here. And you're starting to gain height, Huxley. Mm -hmm. And then let's see, this creature is going to ram right into there. Mm hmm Do we at least see Huxley on its back? I did. Yeah, uh, it's there. So there's a pretty stark contrast because this owl bear is white as the snow. So you probably see that there is someone on its bank. Well, I know a slave, so it's gotta be the <laughs> Yeah, no one sees the layer right now because he's in the middle of mm. a bunch of dwarves. I mean, you stand up taller than Ooh, that. Was... That's true. Rough roll. Mm. Another squad wipe. And that is its turn. So, Huxley! Flying mm -hmm. away. I'm. God, Hack? Mm hmm. How hurt is it? You get advantage even if you weren't reckless. Like, does it look like it takes one more hit and it will die? Uh, they, pff, uh, probably at least two. It depends on how the yeah. damage rolls, really. <laughs> it. <laughs> it's close to being bloodied, but it also doesn't have as insane of a health pool as any of the other creatures, since it's a flyer. Right. Definitely a hit. That's what? 16 hit. That hits. <laughs> uh, I mean, the roll is always at least gonna be much. Um, call my computer. Yeah, yeah, I, I, we're I'm hearing it. Eric. Uh, that is 24 damage. 24 damage. It is still up. Okay. One over as the <laughs> Owlbear mid flight comes crashing down, slamming into the ground like a meteor, drawing a long furrow in the snow. 
where you land relatively softly on its back. It's, it's somewhat of a light creature. And it's down. <laughs> and you're like 120 feet away from the action. <laughs> Having secured the kill. Um, hey. I guess I start running back. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, how much movement do you have? I will run 40 feet and then teleport another 30 feet. Nice. Convenient. Yes. That was a really good thing to roll in this combo. In the distance, there's this small black dot in the snow. <laughs> you see the Albert take off with this speed and then just kind of fall back down. And then you see Crash. Just a tiny dwarf <laughs> running through the snow. <laughs> <laughs> Waving at us. <laughs> yeah, I'm not crawling all the way. Back. God, yeah. Okay, that is Huxley's turn. So the shepherd rakes are all dead. Soleil. Well, hello there, beautiful, beautiful creature. Isn't it nice on top of here? Is it? We'll see. Lord Vir, no! He's dead. The lowest is a 17 to hit. I don't know if that hits. 17 hits? Right. Double. These uh, might as well add one uh, inspiration die. Uh, the no, the bardic inspiration I will add. It's another four. So that is uh, exactly, exactly 50 damage. Oh. And that is enough to bring it to the He's dead. And I will move into the heart. <laughs> All right. Let's see what's going on then. That's my turn. Any commands to you? Yeah, this guy keeps saying can heal this group. Yes. So is it like everybody or a single person? Is a single target on the group. It would somewhat be wasted. Okay. Um. I don't think they can heal anybody else in range. Um, they can move before they cast. I think Rhett's the most hurt out of us, unless Captain Halver is hurt no, he's, injured. He's, 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 he's injured, but he's fine. Um, but I don't know if they can see Rhett. If, if they're turned around. Okay. Like Red's upper body sticking out of the illusion pole. I guess <laughs> then you, they yeah. can see Red. That or we can fortify oh, they can see Red. this one group here with temporary hit points. I think fortification. But I will say this heal is a pretty lucky roll. Yeah, yeah. I just how injured is this group? I know they're bloodied. They are so about am to I. Over, Excuse me. But yeah, also but the combat's you. about to end. Alright, we'll and go ahead and heal Red. Then. Um, and then these two to target. Yeah. Here. Uh, how much do they have left? Okay, I am actually gonna roll this because it might still not work out. So let me just see what the. Total damages. Anyway, Red, you get healed for 70 HP. Nice. 
<laughs> feeling fresh again. Oh! Natural 20. Natural 20. Disgusting. I say beautiful. That is crit, hit, hit, hit. They got to hit. save their companions. See, the dwarves do the indiscriminate fire thing too. See? Oh no, these shots are all well aimed. <laughs> uh, uh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna hide under some animal corpse. Yep, that's over. No, that is that is damage. Certainly <laughs> damage. And that barrage wipes out. You hear this just echoing thunder of bullets and crossbow bolts. So let you throw yourself on the ground. As around you, animal, beast after beast, drop dead on the ground. <laughs> you are a little soaked in blood at this point, but. <laughs> Like and this huge group of animals dead, but the cat still the standing. Moment. You are out of initiative. Ooh. I need to clean oh, things up before the king got here. These people, and the few that are still alive and down, are gonna get replenished. As you have the time for a short rest <laughs> before you. Continue up the mountain. Like, how many dwarves do look like they need like super hard medical attention? Quite a few, a lot actually. Some of them that are not fit to heal enough to continue fighting are carried off to the battlefield. To I'm gonna blow the horn once more, so everyone heals one d ten. <laughs> and it helps a bit. <laughs> Every single person. That's yeah, amazing. every single person within 60 feet that I want to be able to heal can heal. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a rally. It, it's perfect for army fighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Might as well use it as long as we are army fighting. Do you wait until uh, Hux gets back? <laughs> it depends on. Yeah, I guess Hux will be there in a couple seconds. Uh, then I will wait. Otherwise, I can see like dwarves dying around me. I will probably try and yeah, help yeah. them as quickly as possible. Uh, I have a healer's kit, so I can try to save rocks. Batch of three. Yeah. Mm. Okay. You take about an hour to short rest before you move on. How long does eight Go last ahead. again? Eight hours or something? Eight hours. Do okay, cool. Then I'll keep the you HP. You do. Of course, we are going to end here tonight. Because I'm not gonna <laughs> make you sit through the entire second half of combat when we have this break at a relatively good timing. But I am gonna tease the man. No. Oh, very oh, crystals. Is that the resource that they mine? That is the. What is this? We'll find out next time. <laughs> it's, the, it's the star gate. And you would see these probably a mile off. So I'm gonna just play some of them around. Oh, I will I know not what those I will are. I will not even try <laughs> to pronounce that name. <laughs> I know what those are. You oof. Oh, and yes, that is. That is appropriate size. Oh my gosh. The Bjorn. It's Bjorn. That's Bjorn over there. Garum. Uh, what was his name? 
Uh, the, the dinosaur thingy. <laughs> Cragmaw? Mm. Yeah, mm. no, it's Cragmaw. Like Cragmaw. Tiny. Well, while yeah, no, it? it's definitely not that size. Could I get the model for the uh, Triceratops we just fought and establish? Yes, I will get that to you. Gumwolf is just Seems Cerberus. We are ending here, anyways. Let me make a save. Thank you guys so much for the session. Thank you, Dubega. It was fun. It was very fun. Also, actually, guys, I feel like like meeting the kitten di didn't like end up as bad as I feared it would. <laughs> Could have been way worse. The advisor is always worse. It seems like. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying.